more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. It is no wonder that people occasionally find themselves in need of land and decide to create it themselves, without expecting favors from nature. A bright example of this is artificial islands and entire archipelagos in the Persian Gulf. But few people know that even before the creation of the Palm Islands in the United Arab Emirates, Japan had realized an equally unique and more complex project. The Kansai International Airport, an international airport built on reclaimed land in the middle of the sea. In the second half of the 20th century, the Kansai region, located on the island of Honshu, began to experience transportation difficulties. At that time, Osaka Airport, also known as Itami Airport, had been in operation for about 20 years. Expanding it may have seemed like a simpler solution, but it wasn't. It was situated in a densely populated area among buildings, already causing significant discomfort to local residents. The issue was the noise generated by aircraft engines, which had led to numerous complaints and lawsuits from the local residents. As a result, the authorities were forced to establish daytime operating hours for the airport, further exacerbating the transportation situation in Osaka. For developing international flights, a new 24-hour airport was required. However, the problem was that there was no suitable flat terrain in the Osaka area. Eventually, a location was found further away from the shore in Osaka Bay. Here, aircraft could operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week without causing disruptions. However, there was one small problem. Before construction could begin on the airport, they needed to create land for it, more precisely an artificial island. For engineers, this was a step into the unknown because such huge projects had never been attempted before. The task proved to be challenging, as the Kansai region is prone to earthquakes that can cause soil erosion, and Japan was also frequently affected by typhoons. The engineers also had the task of predicting in advance how much the island could settle in the future. Experts estimated that for 40 years of the airport's operation, the island would settle under its own weight by 5.5 or a maximum of 7 meters. The project developers took into consideration the minimum value. After nearly 20 years of project development, in 1987, engineers began construction. They needed to create an artificial island that was 4 kilometers long and 1 kilometer wide. The chosen location had an average depth of about 20 meters. However, this factor didn't pose significant difficulties. There was another serious obstacle, the soil. The bottom of Osaka Bay consisted of a layer of soft clay with a high water content. Divers literally got stuck in the mess while working at the bottom. All this made this place one of the most unfavorable for a bulk island. But this didn't stop the Japanese because they had no other choice. In order for the island to come into existence, engineers used an unconventional method to form a stable foundation. They drove metal pipes into the ground, which were filled with sand. Then the pipes were removed, leaving behind sand columns that contributed to stability. And in the future, together with the surface layer of sand that was also previously placed, they were supposed to absorb water from the clay soil, which would be squeezed out of it under the weight of the artificial island. This had to be done on an area of 510 hectares. On a land plot of such dimensions, you could fit more than 700 football fields. In total, engineers needed hundreds of 40 centimeter diameter pipes to create approximately a million 20 meter sand columns within the soil. All of this didn't guarantee that the island wouldn't settle in the initial stages. However, sooner or later, the soil had to strengthen and stabilize. This was a unique phase of the project and nothing like this had been done before. The outline of the island took its shape when workers began constructing an 11-kilometer long wall made of stones and 48,000 sturdy concrete blocks called tetrapods. The wall protected the reinforced soil from erosion and served as the boundary of the erected island. Its construction took two years. All the work was conducted simultaneously. To create the foundation, the Japanese built a huge 15-kilometer long conveyor. The endpoint of the route was self-unloading barges. To extract the necessary amount of rock, excavators cut down entire mountains in the vicinity of Osaka and Kobe, as well as on the nearby Awaji Island. As a result, they managed to build an embankment 30 meters above sea level, protected by a special anti-wave wall. Significant attention was given to the uniform compaction of the soil in the runway area. Cranes dropped 20-ton tamping piles from a 30-meter height, which looked very powerful. All this work took three years and required 10,000 workers, 80 vessels, and hundreds of units of heavy equipment. Eventually, more than 180 million cubic meters of rock and soil were moved. The largest artificial island of its time was ready. 
However, the final result was still far from completion. The heart of the island was to be the world's first airport built on the sea. Construction began in 1991. Terminal 1 was designed by the renowned Italian architect Renzo Piano, known for his high-tech style. To compensate for uneven settling of the island, 900 adjustable columns were designed to support the terminal building. Their technical condition is constantly monitored by computers. If there is any ground settlement, a column is raised using a jack, and a thick metal plate is inserted under its base. As mentioned earlier, specialists initially relied on a 5.5-meter settlement over 40 years. However, within the first five years, the island settled by 8 meters, indicating a miscalculation. It was even criticized as an engineering geological disaster. But after 10 years, the settlement rate decreased by more than 10 times, and currently the island sinks by no more than 5 centimeters per year. Terminal 1 was constructed using both strong and lightweight materials to withstand the impact of natural elements. In addition to its central part, it has two symmetrical wings. The structure's design boasts an aerodynamic shape inspired by the characteristics of the local nature and climate. Between the airport's framework and the surface, there are flexible joints that allow for temperature fluctuations and seismic vibrations. After the construction of Terminal 1, it became the longest building in the world, measuring 1672 meters, and is still considered the longest terminal to this day. After the stabilization of the soil, due to the high airport load, a decision was made to construct another artificial island next to it, featuring an additional 4-kilometer runway. Construction of this second island began in 2003, and the second runway was opened in 2007. The second island was built slightly higher, and initially planes taxiing to the second runway encountered a slight ascent. However, over time as the second island was settled, they became equal in height. Now, the settlement of both islands is not considered critical. In 2007, along with the second runway, Terminal 2 was put into operation. It was built on the new island and primarily serves domestic flights. Kansai is connected to the mainland by a bridge known as the Skygate Bridge. Its total length is 3,750 meters. Construction began in June 1987 and was completed in 1994, just in time for the airport's opening. The bridge is made of two tiers with six lanes for automobile traffic on the upper level and two railway tracks on the lower level. The Skygate Bridge was erected in sections using floating cranes, which were later joined together. Overall, the airport lived up to the expectations placed on it in terms of reliability. It proved to be highly resilient to the forces of nature. The first tests came soon after its opening. In January 1995, one of the largest earthquakes in Japanese history occurred claiming the lives of about 6,500 people. Thanks to careful design, the airport managed to withstand this catastrophe. In 1998, a powerful typhoon swept over Kansai. Thanks to its wing-like design and strong coastal reinforcements, the airport successfully survived this test of strength. In the subsequent years, the airport on the artificial island faced several more encounters with natural disasters, but managed to come out of all the troubles with dignity. In total, approximately $20 billion was spent on the construction of Kansai Airport. This was a huge amount and one of the most expensive projects ever undertaken in Japan. Kansai could also be considered the most expensive airport in the world. Despite its initial financial losses due to such high costs, it was expected to eventually become profitable, particularly because available land in Japan is becoming increasingly scarce. Kansai stands as one of the best examples of human ingenuity it is amazing not only that the Japanese were able to create the largest artificial island at that time in seemingly impossible conditions, but they were also able to build an international airport on it with a passenger traffic of 25 million per year. Kansai proved to be very comfortable for passengers as evidenced by the awards it received. In 2021, it entered the top 10 airports in the world as compiled by the British consulting company Skytrax. What do you think about this unique airport? Share your opinion in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Kara Show channel. Goodbye.